Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Whatever time you had to tune in to this read aloud, I'm just glad that you're here with me. I'm on my awesome orange couch with my comfy purple blanket um, that was given to me by a student a couple years ago, so I am ready to read. Um, we're going to read this book called Finding Winnie, and it's the true story of a bear that actually inspired Winnie the Pooh. So it'll be a, an interesting version of um, a story we already know. So we can get started. All right, so Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear by Lindsay Maddock. Could you tell me a story? Asked Cole. It's awfully late. It was long past dark and time to be asleep. What kind of story? You know, a true story, one about a bear. He cuddled up close. I'll do my best, I said. A very long time ago, about a hundred years before you were born, there was a veterinarian who lived in Winnipeg. His name was Harry Colburn. A vegetarian, said Cole. Bear doesn't like vegetables. A veterinarian, it means an animal doctor. I know that, Cole said. That's what I'm going to be, maybe, when I'm big. If a horse had the hiccups or a cow had a cough, Harry knew how to make them feel just right. Harry's hands were never cold, even in Winnipeg, where winters are so frosty that icicles grow on the insides of your nose. That was just the kind of doctor he was. But a day came when Harry had to say goodbye to Winnipeg. There was a war far, far away, beyond the end of the country and on the other side of the ocean, and he was going to help. He would be caring for the soldiers' horses. Harry rode east on a train full of other soldiers. He leaned his head against the window watching the land scroll by, wondering what it would be like to be so far from home. The train rolled right through dinner and over the sunset and around 10 o'clock and into a nap and out the next day until it stopped at a place called White River. Harry decided to stretch his legs. On the train platform was a man on a bench with a baby. A baby, said Cole, annoyed. A baby bear, a cub. Harry stopped. It's not every day that you see a bear at a train station. That bear has lost its mother, he thought, and that man must be the trapper who got her. What do trappers do, asked Cole. It's what trappers don't do. They don't raise bears. Raise them? You know, I said. Love them. Harry thought for a long time. Then he said to himself, there is something special about that bear. He felt inside his pocket and said, I shouldn't. But I paced back and forth can't then his heart made up his mind he walked up to the trapper and said i'll give you twenty dollars for the bear is twenty dollars a lot asked cole back then i said even more than a lot Captain Colburn, said the colonel on the train, as the little bear sniffed at his knees. We are on a journey of thousands of miles, heading into the thick of battle, and you propose we bring this most dangerous creature? The bear stood straight up on her hind legs, as if to salute the colonel. The colonel stopped speaking at once, and then, in a quite a different voice, he said, Oh, hollow. The men of Harry's regiment squeezed by to have a look. I've decided to name her Winnipeg, Harry told them, so we'll never be far from home, Winnie, for short. 
They had a very long way to travel, and they had already gone three or four feet when Winnie grew hungry. What do bears eat? The men wondered. What don't they eat? said Harry. Vegetables, Cole reminded me. Winnie ate vegetables, I said. She ate everything except onions. They brought her carrots and potatoes and apples and tomatoes and eggs and beans and bread and a tin of fish and some slop in a dish, but Winnie was still hungry. How about dessert, said Harry, holding up a bottle of condensed milk. Taking the treat in her paws, Winnie lay on her back and hummed a happy song as she drank. The men roared. Harry and Winnie gathered with soldiers from all over Canada in the green fields of Vartier. A whole city of tents had sprung up there. One was a hospital for horses where Harry went to work. Winnie was in the army now. Harry taught her to stand up straight and hold her head high, turn this way and that, just so. Soon she was assigned her own post. Even the colonel agreed that Winnie was a remarkable bear. She might have been the best navigator in the whole army. If you hit something, could she find it? She could. What if it was farther away and farther still? Remarkable, he cried. In the evenings, both of them were too tired to move. When Harry thought about Winnie and the voyage across the ocean, his head said, I shouldn't. His head said, I can't. But his heart made up his mind. Nobody had ever tried to float so many people and animals across the Atlantic Ocean before. 30 ships sailed together carrying about 36,000 men and about 7,500 horses and about one bear named Winnie. When they finally arrived in England, the regiment went to training on the Salisbury Plain where it rained and rained and rained, but Winnie didn't seem to mind. She was the mascot of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Brigade and she attended her post with vigor. One day, Harry came running while she was doing exercises in the tent. You'll bring the whole place down, he said with a laugh. She had grown. It was winter when the order came. The time had come to fight. Winnie posed proudly with the men for pictures to send home to their families. Harry thought for a long time. His head argued one way and then the other, but his heart made up his mind. He went to Winnie and said in a serious way, there's somewhere we need to go. Winnie brushed the mud off her nose and nuzzled in close. Harry drove all the way to the big city. Here we are, said Harry, the London Zoo. Harry took a deep breath. Winnie, this is going to be your home for a while, he said. She tilted her head back. We're shipping out to France, he explained. I have to take care of the horses at the front. She rested her big head against him. I know you want to come, but it's not safe. Winnie's head bowed. Harry's hands were warm as sunshine, as usual. There is something you must always remember, Harry said. It's the most important thing, really. Even if we're apart, I'll always love you. You'll always be my bear. Is that the end? That's the end of Harry and Winnie's story, I said. But I don't want it to be over, said Cole. Sometimes, I said, you have to let one story end so the next one can begin. How do you know when that will happen? You don't, I said, which is why you should always carry on.
Once upon a time, there was a little boy with a stuffed bear. He'd had his bear ever since he was a baby, but somehow the boy had never found the right name for him. He'd tried Teddy and Edward and even Big Bear. One day, the boy went to visit the London Zoo with his father, and there was a bear, a real bear, on the terraces there. Right away, the boy thought, there is something special about that bear. Her name was Winnie. They became true friends. The boy was allowed to come right inside her enclosure to play. Once the boy had found Winnie, he knew just what to call his stuffed bear. He named it Winnie the Pooh. And the boy was called Cole, said Cole. His name was Christopher Robin Milne. Christopher Robin would visit Winnie at the zoo, and then he would take his stuffed animal on all sorts of adventures in the woods behind his home. His father, Alan Alexander Milne, wrote books about them. Harry's Winnie became Winnie the Pooh, and there has never been a more beloved bear. But what about Harry? Cole asked. When Harry visited Winnie at the zoo, he saw how happy she was. She was being raised. She was truly loved, and that was all he had ever wanted from the moment they met at the train station in White River. So after the war, Harry returned to Winnipeg and his life as an animal doctor. Before long, he was married and had a son named Fred. And Fred had a daughter named Laureen. And Laureen had a daughter named Lindsay, which is me. And then I had a son. When I saw you, I thought, there is something special about this boy. So I named you after your great, great grandfather, Captain Harry Colburn. I named you Cole. That's me, said Cole in a whisper. That's you. And that's Winnie? Yes, I said. That's Winnie. And it's all true? Sometimes the best stories are, I said. Cole's eyes grew big, and he said nothing for a long time. Then he hugged his own bear close and let out a yawn that reached far away, and they both turned over and fell asleep. So here is the album that we can look at of some uh, photographs. So here's Harry as a young soldier. And here's some of his journals. Harry kept diaries throughout World War I, and this was the diary from 1914, which was the first year of the war, a diary page from the day that Harry found Winnie. Uh, three soldiers with Winnie at her post. Winnie and Harry have what appears to be a laugh and snack, and then Harry and his fellow soldiers with their mascot, Winnie. And there's a few more. This is a statue in Winnipeg. This photo was taken of Winnie and Christopher Robin in 1925 at the zoo after they became friends. This is the official animal record card that shows when uh, Winnie began her stay in London. And this is Lindsay and Cole, who are the main characters in the story. So there you go. There you have it. There is the true story of Winnie and um, the inspiration for Winnie the Pooh. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time for another read aloud. Bye, guys.